So you want to start a laser tattoo removal practice. Well, there's a lot of things that go into it if you want it to be successful. Hi, I'm Dr. Messina, and in 2005, I added a division to my medical practice called Dr. Undo Tattoo. And over the years, I've noticed and learned a few key things that make the practice successful. In this video, I'm going to discuss them with you. And it's the type of video that you're going to have to watch through and through, beginning to end, because each step is just as critical as the previous step. So let's get into it. The first thing you have to do is check with the local medical society if this is considered the practice of medicine in your state. It might seem strange, but every state is slightly different. Some states do not consider it the practice of laser skin surgery, while others, such as New Jersey, are so strict that unless you're a medical doctor, you can't fire a laser at all. So contact the local medical society, the Office of Professional Discipline, and also the Department of Health. Between the three of them, they should be able to tell you if in your community this is the practice of medicine or not. Next, you're going to have to decide, are you going to have a medical director? If you're a doctor, a nurse, and on occasion a PA, then a medical director will not be necessary. But if you're not a medical professional, you're going to need some medical doctor to advise you, and they're supposed to be intimately involved with every case. They're not supposed to be hundreds of miles away, or in a whole nother state, or just on occasion sign in. So you're going to have to get a medical director in that instance, and your medical director should have a lot of knowledge about lasers and laser procedures. If they don't, they're not going to be considered a qualified director. That's not going to hurt you in opening the practice, but it might hurt you very much. God forbid you wind up getting sued. That medical director comes with a price. You could expect to spend anywhere between $2,000 a month and $150,000 a year for a qualified medical director. So you have to consider these costs in the back of your mind. The next step is to look into insurance. Can you get medical malpractice insurance and liability coverage in case somebody gets hurt in your parking lot or in your office? The medical malpractice insurance is going to be quite costly. If you don't have experience or you're not a medical professional, that policy will cost you several thousand dollars a year. The highest I ever heard was $11,000 for a local person who was doing laser hair removal and laser vein removal. They were not a medical professional. So that's something you're going to have to look at. If you can't get the liability coverage, then I would not recommend starting the practice because it might seem like a safe procedure to do, but God forbid somebody gets blinded, you could be sued for everything you have. So it's very important to have the proper coverage. Now, sometimes if you get a medical director, they might be willing to add you to their policy. But there's a problem right now, and I'm going to discuss it in another video. The problem is that medical directors are starting to lose their license for joining these medispas and not following through. In other words, joining a medispa 100 miles away from you. So it's already told that they're not going to be there that often and something happens, and now they're completely liable. Three doctors have lost their license just in the last three months. So it might be more difficult now to have a medical practitioner add you to their policy because it just adds to their liability. So it's really important before you even go to step four to check and make sure that you could get liability coverage. Now it's time to look at office space. If you're just going to do strictly laser tattoo removal, you're not going to need a lot of space. Basically, you're going to need a place for patients to sit. You're going to need a spot to laser. Now that laser room preferably will have no windows. If it does have windows, you're going to have to pay extra to have a special shield adhered to the glass to prevent the laser beam from shooting out into the street. You're going to need a place to do your work and a place for storage. So usually five, 600 square feet might be quite adequate 
if you're just going to do laser tattoo removal. Now, where are we going to put this office? This is really critical. This is a very niche practice. So if your community doesn't have a lot of people with tattoos, definitely don't put it near your community. You might have to be near the inner city or somewhere where there's a bigger population of younger people. College towns, for instance, are very good. Personally, I live on Eastern Long Island in a very rural area. I would have loved to have put the practice just a few miles from my home. However, I would knock out everyone from Manhattan, Queens, and Nassau County. So I put my office 17 miles away. So I'm on that Nassau-Suffolk border. So I could get people from Manhattan and I could get people from Montauk because I'm right near the expressway. It's very important to know what location you want to be in. Also, how much competition is in that location. I don't care that the laser reps are going to tell you this is a multi-billion dollar industry or that 50% of the people who have tattoos are going to have remorse at one time or another and they're going to want to have laser removal. The laser reps spill the beans without really knowing it and they do this all the time. They'll come to your office and they'll pressure you to buy a laser and they'll say, you better hop in on it now because they're selling like hotcakes. We just put up 15 practices just this past week. What he just told you is you have 15 competitors very close to where your office is. And that's not good. So check out the local competition. Also, it's very important. So now that we've gotten this far, it's time to get training. And this is critical. You have to go to a quality program. A lot of things could happen with laser tattoo removal. You could get wounds, you could get blisters, you could get infections, herpes breakouts, you could even get a massive allergic reaction. And you have to be prepared to know how to expect them, who's at risk for them, and then peripherally, how to treat them. Unfortunately, if you're not a medical professional, the treating part might lead to a real problem. That's why you have to have a medical director nearby who knows exactly what to do and how to handle it. The training that comes with lasers is not adequate. They're assuming that you already know the fundamentals. So you can't learn tattoo removal from that one day training course that comes with a laser when you purchase one. Go to a qualified course of study and learn how to do it. Physicians could also do it through preceptorships with other physicians but the lay people are going to have to take a class. And now we get to the topic that could bankrupt you, getting the laser. This is where most of the practices go belly up because lasers are expensive. Use lasers are expensive. Laser repair is insane. So you have to decide, am I going to get a new laser or am I going to get a used laser? Am I going to go Q-switched or am I going to go Pico? There are big differences. I personally prefer the Q-Switch lasers. They have a long track record. I get a lot of tattoos out completely using my Q-Switch lasers. And they cost a little less than the Pico laser. If you're buying new, expect to spend at least $150,000 on that laser. If you're getting new Pico second, expect to spend at least $175,000 to over $300,000 for that laser. The laser comes with a one year warranty, after which you have to purchase a warranty. That's 10% of the list price. So if you negotiated a laser for $200,000, and then you have usually a three to five year loan or a lease, now after one year, you have to get the maintenance contract. That's 10% of the list, that laser that you may have spent $200,000 for, you might be quite surprised to find the company tells you it actually lists for $300,000, which means you now have a $30,000 a year burden on top of all your payments. So you have to think of these things. Now let's look at the used lasers. Used lasers come with a little problem as well. First, it's important to know how that laser was cared for and where you're getting the laser. I'll give you what happened to me. 
I found a local gynecologist who bought a hair removal machine. He paid $110,000 for it. He barely used it. I knew he barely used it. He told me he would sell it to me for $25,000. So I went to see it and I brought a laser repair technician with me. Was it in his office? No. Was it in a closet in his office? No. It was in his garage. Really bad. Number one, every creepy crawly in the world could climb into the machine. But worse than that is I live in the Northeast and we freeze up in the winter. And these lasers have a water cooling system inside them. That water cooling system froze, ruptured. When it thawed out, it wet all the electronic components and that laser was shot. So buying a used laser, you better be careful. If it sat in somebody's garage, Forget about it. Now you could buy it from a lot of companies. Many companies sell used equipment that they give the once over to. And they might give you a warranty, usually about three months, which is okay. Barely adequate because if you're just starting, you might not use that laser very often for those first three months. And when that thing breaks, they never seem to break for $200. They seem to break for $10,000 to $20,000. That is a problem with used lasers and repairs. Some of the parts they consider proprietary. In other words, the manufacturer of that laser won't sell every part that's in it. So that means usually these secondary repair people have what they call a carcass. In other words, a dead laser of that type sitting around and they harvest parts from it. But if that part you need, they don't have, and that part is proprietary, you're gonna to have to call the laser manufacturer to come and repair your used laser. It's not gonna be so easy. They're not just gonna come and fix it. They're gonna come and say, we have to recertify this thing, which is usually $20,000. And all the recertification does is give it the once over and they either say, no, there's too many bastardized parts in this thing. Or they're gonna say, Okay, now you could buy the part that's $20,000 more. So now you have a $40,000 bid on top of what you paid for that laser. So getting used isn't as easy as you might think. The other thing is Chinese lasers. You could go on eBay, you could look on some other sites, and you could find Chinese lasers that look just like standard lasers. There's one that looks like a Pico Shaw, almost exactly. And instead of selling for $300,000, it sells for about $5,000. They're not FDA approved and they're junk. And if you're a medical professional and you buy one of those lasers and you hurt somebody with it, you will have no leg to stand on in a court of law and you would get hurt very badly in a lawsuit if you used some Chinese non-FDA approved laser system. Also, that thing is gonna break in a very short period of time. So getting those super cheap but cool looking lasers over the internet, no good. So now after we've done all of this and you've got your laser and you got all your expenses tucked away, now it's time to advertise. People have to know you're there. And even internet advertising could be very expensive. At the baseline, probably about $800 a month at the bare bones minimum to advertise on the internet. And that's gonna be an added expense. So, so far, we've got the expenses of getting a medical director, the expenses of getting an office, the expenses of insuring your practice as well as your office, the expense of buying the laser, which is the really make it or break it because you're talking about six figures, and now advertising expenses. So this is a good basis for you to consider all of these aspects before starting a laser tattoo removal practice. I know on the surface, it looks like a lot of fun and a lot of money coming in. One of my partners came to my office to watch a tattoo removal. It was $400. It took about 15 seconds to laser it. And he said, Glenn, I can't believe it. You just made $400 in 15 seconds. And I said, yeah, with $9,000 a month in overhead, I have to do a lot of these just to break even. That's something you have to think about. 
I hope you learned something in this video, and if you're considering making a laser tattoo removal practice, you now at least understand some of the hurdles you have to go over before you get it even off the ground. If you did like this, I would like it if you give me a thumbs up, maybe hit the bell and subscribe for future videos. If you do think it's interesting, let me know if I should do more of these equipment videos or should I just stick with the aesthetic medicine and the topics of interest. Take care. Have a good day.